Hi everybody, Lori here for Concord 9th, introducing the new March 2024 release. Hello and welcome to the introduction to the new Garden Path stamp set and Garden Path stencil pack. This is a beautiful floral layering stencil set. Uh, the back of the packaging gives you a little sneak preview of what it looks like when you layer all five stencils together. So there's five stencils in the pack and it creates a beautiful floral entire background. So like a full card front here. So I'll, I'll just kind of lay these in order. They're not, I don't think they're in order, but this is how I would do it. Two big blooms. And then when you line this one up over top, it gives you like the center of the bloom and the little floral clusters that surround the blooms. And then here are the leaves that kind of hug the blooms. These are like floral centers and stems. And this is basically like a mask that covers everything so you can blend the background if you choose to do so. And then here is the Garden Path stamp set. Uh, it says, hope your day is wonderful. Oh, so very grateful. Flip this around and this says, oh, so happy for you. Sending you so much love. There's a small hello and thinking of you. And so these are, you might think, kind of wonky in the size, but I'll show you the end. They're perfectly sized to fit in that shape between the two floral clusters. There are little registration marks, so you can easily line this up with a panel of cardstock that's cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And so I'm gonna to get to blending, demonstrating how easy this is to put together. I'm using all Concord Ninth uh, ink pads here, starting with Honeysuckle. Okay, so I do oftentimes when I blend, I go a little bit gradient. I call it the gradient love. And that just means in some areas I go a little heavier, a little more vibrant, and some I do lighter. I just prefer that look, but it definitely looks great if you just give a flat, even wash as well. A lot of different looks you can achieve when you're ink blending. Okay, lining up the next stencil, and I'm blending a little bit of Buttercup in the center of the blooms. And you'll probably see me switch in and out of different sizes of blending brushes throughout the video because when I'm doing smaller areas, I like to use small little brushes. When I do larger areas, I like to switch to a bigger brush. Sometimes I'm just trying to grab a brush that looks like it's the right color of the ink I'm using. Uh, here I'm doing a couple of the blooms that are surrounding the large bloom with sorbet, a little bit of poppy, and I love using poppy. I think it's one of my favorite colors of the Concord Ninth inks because it's just such the perfect happy red. And um, then we have a little carnation, a little bit of that over there on the side. Okay, lifting that up and you could see how this is starting to come together. And then I'm gonna layer on the next stencil. I didn't even check. I don't think these are numbered. It really doesn't matter which order you go. As long as you line them up, where they're supposed to be, you can go in whatever order to flute. Okay, adding some more detail to the center. So I pulled out Sunflower, which is just a little slightly darker than Buttercup. And then here's Cranberry for the centers of those poppy little bloom clusters. And again, using a small little blender brush to get in those tiny little nooks and crannies of the dots. Okay, and then here we have more, I use the same color, sorbet. So if you don't have a lot of colors, you can do a sorbet center on a sorbet bloom. You just blend a little heavier, a little more, a little more oomph. And then a little avocado for those leaf stems here and there. There's only three of them. So it's not gonna wear you out. You know, some layering stencil sets, by the time I'm at the end, I feel like I had a workout. You know, some are harder than others. Some are more work than others. This one here, this one you can relax. And it's going to give you a beautiful result with minimal effort. And that's what it's really all about at the end of the day. Okay, so for some of these leaves here, I did out of lemongrass. And, uh, and then for the other ones, I pulled out clover. Just for a contrast in green, I like to have different shades of green. Sometimes I like to do shades of aquas and blues for the leaves when I wanna shake it up and live on the edge. Okay, so we have that clover that had an avocado um, stem detail, and those two seem to work well together. Wasn't even sure how that was gonna go, but I like where it's heading. And then now if you wanna mask off all the blooms and blend the background, this is such an easy way to do it. I lined that up, I pulled out sea glass for a very light, subtle background. 
not too poppin'. Although I'll show you an example of one at the end where I did a blueberry background, a very rich, dark background, and it really makes the blooms pop. Kind of gives you the rifle paper vibes uh, when you do a really rich background like that. So just trying to make an even sea glass background here. Lift this off and we're done. One thing I like to do to, uh, I used a sticky mat to hold everything together and it makes it easy. Okay, so here's how these sentiments fit right in that spot. That's why they're shaped the way they are and you get four different options to choose from for different occasions. And I chose to use the sending you so much love, inking that up with black ink and stamping it and look at how easy that is. I'm gonna adhere this to a standard A2 size card base. And then I'll show you a couple other examples that I've created to show you a little variation. Okay, so here's the one that I just blended and I put it on a white card base. It's nice and flat for mailing. I did add a few little Concord Ninth enamel dots in coordinating colors to the centers of a few of the blooms. And this card is finished. Now, one other one here I did, very simple, is I only did the bottom half. So just that bottom cluster, but I centered it in the card base. So I left out everything on the top and made a simpler design on a white panel. Gives you lots of clean white space. I did a bright poppy bloom with a little hello sentiment. And then here's one, same exact procedure, but I did a blueberry background. It's nice and rich. I did light blooms and then I chose a different sentiment hope your day is wonderful and so it gives you a totally different look just by customizing the colors and that is the introduction to the garden path stamp set and garden path stencil pack hello and welcome to the introduction to the new carpe denim stamp set and carpe denim dies not to be confused with carpe diem we have carpe denim, so I guess we are seizing the denim today. Here is the carpe denim stamp set. It says it's your day. You're doing so great. Uh, you are all kinds of awesome. Hey, good looking. Uh, we are a perfect pair. Good things ahead. You've got this best friend ever, or you could do best of the best. There is a sun and a smiley face. So that's a fun little mini stamp set. Lots you can do. Now here is the Carpe Denim die set. I'm going to show you all the pieces. So first, the main star of the show is the denim jacket, which you can do in a lot of different colors. Here I did a honeysuckle. And then this little die here cuts out little dots at the top back. I don't know what you call that part of the denim jacket, but it's two dies. So you could also do like a solid, maybe out of pattern paper. I just adhered some poppy red behind. So it kind of pops through like red polka dotted on a honeysuckle jacket. And then you have these little details that add a collar and little cuffs, and then these little details on the side of the jacket. I'm not sure what they're called, but you can also add silver or gold enamel dots to the jacket so it looks like little brass buttons or what have you, you know, to really zhuzh it up and look like you mean business. Now there's this oval die that is sized perfectly for a few of the sentiments in the stamp set. So it fits perfect with the good things ahead, and it fits perfect with the hey, good looking, and you could customize the color with that as well. Now these three kind of angled rectangles fit with the sentiments in the stamp set. You can do like I did here white with a buttercup outline. And then here I did a poppy with a cranberry outline. And so you can really get different looks on the colors there. And like best friend ever, you've got this. There's little sunglasses. And here's the sun. I did the uh, like the yellow sun out of buttercup and then the center out of sunflower to give a little contrasting color. And those little ovals are elbow patches. So you can really make your jean jacket really, really detailed. Here's a little cherry cluster. Um, it gives you the stem and the cherries. So you can do two different colors. There's a little peace sign. And then here I stamped the sun and then I use the die to cut it out. So you can either stamp the sun or die cut the sun. And then there's this little die here that gives you four images, a bolt of lightning, a little star, uh, a little heart, and a little shamrock. 
All these kind of resemble like patches that you might put on your jacket if you want to really patch it up. Okay, there's a larger heart and a larger star. All these things can be used to decorate your jacket or or you know, just add them to your background, just have fun with it. There's also a rainbow, how could I forget that one? I put it on this light nectar jean jacket. So the rainbow has like a white backer and then three arches. And now here, I'm just kind of laying these on to get give you the idea of what it looks like if you added all these little images. It looks like fun, colorful patches to your jean jacket. Okay, for the blueberry jean jacket, if I took out the sun, you could switch out, add the heart. You could put in that cute little bloom right there and you customize the color of the bloom. And then here's like an oval, how that fits right on the back for a sentiment. Hey, good looking right there on the back of the jean jacket. Or you could put the white one, good things ahead. That also works well. Now here's how those angled little sentiment strips fit. They also fit on the back. You don't have to put them on a jacket, but it is an option. Best friend ever, or you could do best of the best, or you could do you've got this. So let me show you a couple of projects that I've created featuring the Carpe Denim stamp set and die set. I stripped it up on this one. I couldn't resist a rainbow stripped up background. I added some silver enamel dots to the cuffing detail. It looks very fancy schmancy. And then this card here, I did a bunch of different color of jackets for the background. I did a dragon fruit jacket in the center and then scattered a bunch of those iconic images all around because it just looks so fun and happy. Lots of color, Lots of happiness. And that is the introduction to the Carpe Denim stamp set and Carpe Denim dies. Hello and welcome to the introduction to the new Tulip Festival stamp set and Tulip Festival dies. Now the stamp set is mini, but it packs a mighty tulip punch. First you have the tulip image, some splattery spots that you can stamp and several sentiments, hello, Thank you. Some are scripty, a variety of font. I'll always pick you. You make the world more colorful. You make me happy. And then you turn it here. I think you are wonderful and happy spring. So a lot of different sentiments to choose from for different occasions. And then here is the Tulip Festival die set. Uh, there's three tulip blooms, several different stems and greenery to choose from. I die cut everything to show you how it looks and how you can layer. Uh, for the stems and greenery, I did a mixture of parsley and sprout solid color cardstock. So as you can see, when you lay on the like leaves, you can mix and match. And the stems kind of are all slightly different as well. Some kind of arch to the left, to the right, you can get different looks. And then for the blooms, there's three of them. They're all slightly different. You really can mix and match. You can't go wrong with the organicness of the tulip stem. And so here I did three out of uh, grapefruit cardstock. You can make it as open or as tight as you prefer. Here's a buttercup. And then here's one out of honeysuckle. And again, you can really mix and layer these blooms to your heart's content. Now, if you wanna add a little bit of you know, color contrast, one thing that I did was I took kind of like the same ink color. So I pulled out the buttercup ink and I'm blending a little bit on the buttercup die cuts to the outer petals, or you could do the inner petal or you could do all three. You really can do whatever floats your boat. Okay, so when I glue these on, you can see that it gives a little bit of contrast and it has some nice interest. Another thing you could do if you don't wanna blend is die cut them out of different shades of solid color cardstock. So I could have die cut um, maybe one out of buttercup and then the outer two out of sunflower or honeycomb, so you could do that as well. Mixture of solid color cardstock, or you can add the contrast with blending. Okay, so that's the buttercup bloom, and I'm just gonna quickly adhere that on a stem, just to show you how easily that comes together. I'll glue on the leaves just a little bit. I'm using Barely Arts glue. Any liquid glue will work great. You could probably even use tape runner in a pinch. So there is a perfect little tulip stem. I'm going to do the same process with the honeycomb. Um, I pulled out the honeycomb ink and I'm blending it on those outer honeycomb petals. I'm not sure if maybe you should blend the inner or the outer. I should have googled it. 
at the end of the day, there's no tulip police out there. You can either make the inner darker or the outer darker or do whatever you think looks fabulous. I think this looks really good. Okay, I'm gonna glue this on another stem. So if you use everything that's in the die set one time, I didn't repeat anything. I just took all the dies and die cut them once. You'll end up with three finished tulips. And I'll show you, I'm gonna use all three of these tulips on the card at the end that I'll show you. Uh, but if you wanna just do one tulip in the center of a card, you know, keep it more sophisticated and refined, that looks very classy. Or you could do like a whole bouquet of tulips and really bring in all the colors. A little bit north of me, up in Michigan, there's a little town called Holland, Michigan, and they are known for their tulips. In May, I believe, they have a gorgeous tulip festival. So I immediately thought of Holland, Michigan when I saw this stamp and die set. Okay, so I blended a little bit of, uh, what was it? Grapefruit ink on the outer grapefruit petals, glued that on the stem, and then I'm adding the little leaves to the side. Now this one has the mixture. One side is a sprout leaf and the other side is a parsley leaf. And I like that mixture of greenery just for some added interest. Okay, so there you have three finished tulips using the Tulip Festival die set. Now I'm gonna take these tulips and put them on a card that I will show you here. Okay, here's these very clean, simple, colorful, happy cards. Here's the three tulips that I put together. I kind of hung them off the left side of the panel. I added the sentiment, you make the world more colorful. And then here I just did six tulip blooms. I did blend tone on tone. I also stamped those splattery dots from this stamp in the Tulip Festival stamp set. I added the happy spring sentiment and some clear drops for embellishment. And that is the introduction to the new Tulip Festival stamp set and Tulip Festival dies. Hello and welcome to the introduction to the new Folk Art Flower Turnabout stamp set. This is a beautiful floral turnabout stamp set. If you're familiar with Concord 9th and their genius trademark turnabout system, then you know how fun this is to create an entire background pattern. There's also several sentiments in the set. Thank you so and then much, and then there's also love. So you can do a combination of different love you, thank you, thank you so much. But what's really unique about this folk art flower turnabout is it's two different stamps. You've got the outer floral border and you have the inner cluster. So you can do a border or you can do a center or you can do it all together to create an entire completed floral background. So here's the outer portion. If you just use that, it would give you more of a border look. And here is the center. And if you just use that, it would just give you a center cluster. Use them together and you got the whole shebang. Okay, so I got a panel of white cardstock and it's all, all ready to go in the all-in-one jig. I've got my stamp lined up, both the outer and the inner. I'm using that little stamp conditioner eraser to whenever I have a new stamp and I want it to stamp really good, you gotta condition it and then clean it. And the first color I'm gonna ink up with is Buttercup. Okay, a lot of times I do have to stamp twice. That's why it's nice to use a Misty. Sometimes I don't stamp twice. Um, it just really depends on how you know saturated you want your color to be or how well it stamps. Okay, so this is the first pass with Buttercup and it looks great. And then I clean my stamp and then you rotate it. Forgot to mention, in the all-in-one jig, there are numbers up in the top right corner. So I started at one and then I rotate it two. So you can always remember where you're at. Here we are with sea glass ink. So we have buttercup and sea glass. And you know, you can really get a lot of different looks depending on your color combination. Another thing you can do is stamp all four rotations with one color. You don't have to use four different colors. Um, you could also stamp on solid color cardstock. You could stamp like grapefruit ink on grapefruit cardstock to get a very subtle tone on tone. If you wanted just like a, a nice pattern, subtle background. So there's really a lot of different looks. So, so far we have buttercup, sea glass, grapefruit, and lastly I'm doing sorbet. And this is a very 
springy vibe. I'm feeling springy. I'm feeling Easter. I'm feeling come on sunshine and warmth come my way. Okay, so there's your finish panel. Makes an entire background on a standard A2 size card. So I wanted to show you what this looks like with the four different rotations. Okay, here is with one stamp, like I didn't rotate it. Here is when you rotate it twice, a little bit more detail. Here's when you rotate it three times. And then here is the finished four rotations. So you really can build up the detail. Now, just for fun, I wanted to show you how it looks if you just use the outer portion. So this is going to create more of a border look and it leaves the center open. So it's a great way if you want to, you know, put a big sentiment right in the center or maybe some imagery in the center and you don't want those blooms across the whole entire panel. This is another look. So that's two rotations with Oceanside and Sea Glass. And here we have a little, I believe this is Sprout, a nice light green. Again, I'm still feeling springy. And you could stop right there at three. I think that looks pretty good, but I'm gonna finish it off with four and I pulled out parsley. Now, when I go from sprout to parsley, I don't even bother cleaning my stamp. You know what I mean? I feel like I can go right, right into parsley and you don't have to waste the energy. Okay, so there you have four rotations using just the outer um, folk art flower turnabout. And then here's one where I stamped on eucalyptus cardstock. And I also used some white pigment ink and juniper, sea glass. So it's kind of tone on tone, gives you a muted look. Wanted to show you one last version where I only use the center. Started off strong with poppy, and then I'm gonna rotate it here. This one's gonna be a little bit more vibrant. So poppy and honeysuckle. Again, I've got the all-in-one jig. I'm using a standard A2 size panel of white cardstock. Uh, here we have grapefruit for the third rotation. And then lastly, we're gonna use sea glass. So we have poppy, honeysuckle, grapefruit, and sea glass. And when you do all four of those, you can see how it makes this kind of like circular little cluster right in the center of your panel. And then here's the four cards that I put together using the Folk Art Flower Turnabout stamp set. Okay, so this first one, I did some of that Tulip Festival out of vellum for a little, you know, sheer greenery. And then I did the Thank You So Much sentiment and a few enamel dots. Here I paired this with the Just Colin die set. I also added a hello sentiment from the Sweet as Pie dies. I kind of coordinated my telephone colors to match the floral background. And then here we have that stamped eucalyptus background panel. I paired it with the Spring Bunny stamp set and Spring Bunny dies. This feels a little bit more earthy, slightly muted, a little bit rustic with the craft, the eucalyptus and the twine. And then lastly, we have just that floral cluster right in the center. I I paired it with a best wishes word die from the Everyday Expressions die set, a few sea glass enamel dots and a sea glass card base. And that is the introduction to the new Folk Art Flower Turnabout stamp set. Hello and welcome to the introduction to the new Spring Bunny stamp set and Spring Bunny dies. So this is another little mini adorable stamp set. There are three arched sentiments, happy spring, happy Easter, and hello there. Now this is the little bunny nose and eye that you can add to the silhouette of the bunny. Uh, florals, butterfly, Easter eggs, and all the greenery, which by the way, I noticed that the imagery in the floral and greenery is very similar to the imagery in the folk art flower turnabout. So these two will coordinate very well together. So I went ahead and stamped all the images in the Spring Bunny stamp set, then used the coordinating dies to cut them out. The large scalloped circle I did out of vellum. Here's the bunny out of some ballet slipper, and I added the nose and the eye out of wheat. You can also slip in very carefully the Easter egg or a bloom or whatever you want into the bunny's hands or paws, should I say? What does a bunny have, paws? 
I think they're paws. Anywho, here's all the little greenery that you can just kind of cluster around the bunny on top of your vellum scalloped circle. Cute little butterfly up there that I stamped with sea glass ink. So these are very Eastery colors. Now this stem has a little extra white knob at the top that's perfect for adhering your bloom. There's also a little teeny heart, which I have used so many times in this release. I've paired it with the telephone and all different things. You always need a little heart. Um, so some greenery. Now this little stem here, I believe you can put these little blooms on top if you want to. Use it with, use it without. Just let your heart be the guide. Let your spring bunny heart run wild. Okay, so that is all the images and the dies from the Spring Bunny stamp set and the Spring Bunny die set. Here's a couple of projects that I've created using this new collection. So this is the vellum scallop circle with the bunny, which I stamped out of wheat. And then I kind of flanked it with the, the blooms. I, I embossed the sentiment in white on that vellum. And then here's a very, very clean and simple card. I stamped that Easter egg on the background to kind of create my own pattern paper. You've got the simple pink bunny holding the Easter egg and the happy Easter sentiment, a small white panel on a cream card base. And that is the introduction to the Spring Bunny Stamps and Dies. Hello and welcome to the introduction to the new Just Calling stamp set and Just Calling dies. This is a really fun telephone themed stamp and die set that is also interactive. So here's the little mini stamp set. There are several little sentiments. Just Calling to say, I miss you. I love you. I heard the big news. Hello. Let's get together. Happy birthday. Hip hip hooray and sorry. And then this is the dial that goes on the telephone like a rotary, the old school rotary phone. And then some little imagery, heart, diamond ring, a gift, three hearts, like a party. What do you call that? Like a party emoji. There's the telephone um, cord. And then now for the dies, I'm going to show you what they all look like. I did a mixture of color because I just had so much fun with this telephone. So there's the base of the telephone, which I did out of three different colors. And then you have the handset. Is that what you call it? I had to Google it. I'm not sure what the thing is that you hold to your head. There's two different phone cords, just two different swirly designs that you can choose from. And then here's a little base detail that you can add. You don't have to add it, but if you want to get a little contrasting color, um, just adds a little more detail. There's also a little die for teeny little feet that go on the base of the telephone. Again, optional, but just added detail. Then these are the little details to the handset if you want to do a contrasting color. Now this die is if you want to make it interactive. And I'll show you how that works in a minute. There's the large wheel. This is also the interactive part that you can use, but you don't have to make the card interactive. This little solid circle here goes in the middle of the dial. Here's the little dial. It's one white circle and you can use the stamp set to stamp the numbers on the wheel. Is that what you call it? And then the little detail that covers it. Uh, which I did out of some grapefruit cardstock. Now these uh, interactive die cuts are labeled. They say glue one, and then these four little dots, glue two, three, four, five, and then over here the dial is glue six and seven. So if you wanna go in order to put it together for an interactive card, I'll show you how that works. But first I'm just gonna glue on these little details to the phone. I believe the phone base is lemongrass cardstock, and then this little base detail is avocado or grasshopper. Sometimes I forget. The little feet are dark evergreen cardstock, and so it's just three different shades of green. But you can see I have a red phone up there with uh, grapefruit and harbor. And then over on the left, I did a purple phone. So you can see you get a lot of different looks by customizing the colors. Okay, so putting on those little details to the handset. Now for a card base. I'm using some of the new Winterberry cardstock. I'm just making a standard A2 size card, scored it down the middle, and then I wanna show you how you line up this interactive die. Um, you're gonna butt this up 
right in the center of your front fold. Okay, it's not gonna, that bottom part is just gonna bump up right to the edge and you just wanna center it. I'm gonna hold it down with a little Easy C pink tape. That way it stays right in place when I run it through my die cutting machine. So I took it off camera, run it through my die cutting machine and then I'll show you how this looks. Basically, it makes two little openings. One is like a speech bubble right in the center and one is a little circle opening for your interactive, uh, what do you call it, like spinner mechanism. Okay, so I'm scoring that with my Teflon bone folder. You have your winterberry card base ready to go. You could also do the card base out of white or whatever color pattern paper toots your flute. So here's your little circular spinner that's gonna go behind but first you got to add things to it so i'm going to quickly stamp a bunch of sentiments there are little like oval embossed segments that are going to fit within that speech bubble and so i'm using all the different sentiments that are in the just calling stamp set and when you rotate it you can rotate and select your custom sentiment or you can use the icons which i'm going to use a mixture i'm using just about everything that's in the just calling stamp set hello uh, I love you, miss you, hip hip hooray. I'm using some of the, what you call these like emojis, the iconic images, a heart, a star, you get the idea. There's 10 little openings. So you're gonna have to fill with 10 different things. Now here's where it says glue one, and then you have the glue two, three, four, and five little discs. And I'm gonna glue these all to the center. You just follow the directions. It couldn't be easier to put together. And when you stack up these four little discs, it makes enough dimension that it creates like your spinner mechanism, for lack of a better term. This is what your wheel is gonna spin on when you stack up these four little doodads. Okay, I'm using my little embellishment wand or a quick stick tool, whatever you have, really makes this process a lot easier. So make sure that that's nice and dry. You might wanna press down, hold, count to 10, whatever you need to do. And then now put together while that's drying, my little rotary dial. Okay, so I have a dial cover out of grapefruit and I've gone ahead and stamped the numbers on the wheel. So I'm gluing this on and I went ahead and die cut three more um, just to make this dimensional. So I end up stacking up four grapefruit covers for the dial. You don't have to do four, you could just do two, but this is what you're really gonna use, you're gonna put your finger on and spin. So it's nice if this is a little bit hefty, a little bit thicker and stronger, cause this is the part that you're gonna be, you know, turning with your finger. So it's nice if it has a little bit of heft, a little bit dimension. And you know what I say about dimension. Dimension is life. Okay, so you're gonna put this wheel you're gonna slide it in and pop that little spinner mechanism right through that die cut window opening. And then you can see how your little sentiments fit in the speech bubble. Okay, now I'm gonna glue the phone onto the Winterberry card base. So put a little liquid glue on the back of it and see how the phone has a hole. Just fit that right around your spinner mechanism. Press down on your card base, make sure that's nice and secure. And then you're gonna glue the dial right onto that spinner mechanism. And the phone has four little notches. That's just to help you center the dial. So make sure you got your one at the top, you know, I guess you don't have to make the one at the top, but it does look good that way. So you're gonna let this dry completely before you try spinning it. Don't try to spin it until she's dry. So go ahead and put the rest on, you got your little, uh, spirally phone cord. You know those old phone cords that used to get so tangled up? I used to be able to stretch our phone cord across the whole entire kitchen and sit in the living room. That's how long we had a cord. Those were the good old days. Okay, then that little extra solid dot that kind of covers up the glue number. And then I also did a little heart. You could use an enamel dot, but this little heart is from the Spring Bunny die set and just adds a little fun detail. Okay, see your spinner um, on the back. And then once this is dry, you can turn the dial and it will turn the sentiment inside the speech bubble. And that is the interactive fun of it all. Everybody, I show this to my uh, daughter and my husband and they were like, 
That is so cool. Everybody loves an interactive card. They really think that you're like a wizard. Like you're so smart. Here's another example where I use eucalyptus and um, I believe that is a sunflower phone or honeycomb. One of those colors. But I just kind of switched up the colors and it gives you a whole new feel. And then one other one here I paired with that folk art flower turnabout pattern background. And I did the hello from the sweetest pie dies. So another color combination with a pattern background. And that is the introduction to the Just Calling stamp set and Just Calling dies. <music> <laughs>